Inproheat Industries was established and grew out of the booming resource industries of the early 60s in British Columbia, Canada. Founded by Austrian-trained engineer Eric Panz, an immigrant to Canada after the Second World War, he was later joined by his brother Gustav Panz, whose expertise in industrial pumps and applied refractory materials was an ideal complement to his brother's engineering skills. The company gained a reputation for engineering innovation in thermal process, heat and combustion technologies. And in 2008, Improheat celebrated over 50 years of service with offices across Western Canada and projects that span the globe from Europe to Southern and Central America and throughout the United States. The company continues to grow and expand with global aspirations under the leadership and guidance of now president of Improheat Industries, Mr. Stephen Pants. Welcome, Steve, to your executive profile. Thank you, Kim, and thanks for that introduction. Oh, you're very welcome. Quite a legacy. You must be quite proud of your father and, and uncle and what they were able to accomplish. The brothers have done a great job in, in grounding Improheat when they first started the business, and they've accomplished a lot in a, in a relatively short period of time. Those were the pioneer days. They were great times. They were times when uh, there was a real need for uh, technology here in Western Canada, and mm -hmm. they were at the right place at the right time. All right, now you followed your father in the, uh, in the field that you chose. You became an engineer, and you actually joined the company in 1982. Uh, in 2011, I think it was, you actually um, took over the reins of the company. So um, you give us a bit of perspective. Uh, you weren't there in the early days, but you were there halfway through, I guess, in the 80s. And now, fast forward to 2014, what, what's changed? in the industry, in the business? What are your challenges compared to the, those times back then? <clears throat> That's a great question. Um, <laughs> what's changed? Everything has changed. Probably the most significant change has been uh, lack of time mm. or the, the progression of time. It's so rapid to accomplish tasks and the, the expectation from uh, your customer base um, really, really puts a lot of pressure on an on, on, on organization to execute. So. The internet has been this catalyst for ex tremendous uh, d uh, information awareness, but also it's uh, a challenge to sometimes remain uh, current because uh, things are changing so quickly. Now, you're in the thermal energy industry. You develop systems uh, for that. And I know that, uh, uh, let's talk a little bit just briefly about submerged combustion, which was a technology that your father had patented. And that's been quite a, an interesting story as well. You want to touch on that for a moment? Sure. Uh, submerged combustion was a technology that we embarked on in the early 70s in the first energy crisis in North America. We had a customer who uh, held hands with us and shaking hands and say, let's make something happen here to help mm -hmm. us become more efficient. And as a result of that first project, which was essentially uh, trying to heat liquids as efficiently as possible because energy costs back in the early 70s were, were starting to really take off mm -hmm. and was becoming a, a big concern for a lot of heavy industry. So submerged combustion was a technology that, that, that achieved the means of providing the highest efficiency for heating liquids at the lowest cost of energy. Mm -hmm. As a consequence, um, it was uh, the beginning of a great road ahead of us for developing solutions for heating liquids in all different parts of North America or even the globe. Back to the challenges today, um, and I, I know that submerged combustion sort of spoke to that because it's a very efficient system. It's really um, and, and environmentally friendly. A lot of efficiencies there that you brought to the table, and now it seems it's even more critical. And particularly in in the in your industry, there's much more regulation. There are concerns about environmental um, impact, uh, greenhouse gases, and so on. Um, Certainly submerged combustion is part of the process, but how has that impacted the rest of your business um, in terms of creating systems that uh, people can, you know, companies can use that'll, that'll increase their bottom line, but yet still be responsible? We, we talked about this mantra of efficiency and yet responsibility. So it's not just about the bottom line. There's other bottom lines. There's the ecology, the eco ecology <coughs> and so on. You know, the, uh, it's a very good point. The, Today, what's on everybody's radar is the how energy or how industry is impacting the environment mm -hmm. and the need to ensure that uh, we have responsible development 
And that means minimum greenhouse gas emissions and uh, providing high energy efficiency. And submerged combustion addresses both of those major concerns, mm -hmm. so from a responsibility perspective. Um, the, the more efficient you are in your process, uh, the less energy you consume, which means there's going to be a net reduction in greenhouse gases, which is a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're seeing this not only in here in Western Canada, but it's a global concern because greenhouse gases go around the world. So it's, a, it's an interesting um, rapid awareness, and the inter inter Internet has truly brought that forward really quickly. There's no... It's a global economy now. It's a global now. issue, global economy. And you're economy. doing business all over the world now. It was Western Canada, but then it became North America, and you're doing business in South America and Europe and so on. The Internet has helped to really expand that in that way. The Internet has really been a catalyst for uh, uh, providing awareness to our little company okay. here in Western Canada. So, you know, uh, submerged combustion, as great as it was, is, and, and what it can do and the efficiencies that you get from that, that's not all that you do. And I know that you have a number of principal partners that you work with and represent on all of the projects that you, uh, that you develop. Um, there are challenges for them as well. Without a doubt, you know, we, we represent a variety of major international companies here in Western Canada. Mm -hmm. And like any, any company in, in our capacity, exposure to the things that we do and the solutions we provide is an ongoing task. And so the, the question and the challenge for us is how do we remain current? How do we continue to expand um, our knowledge base to potential users? And our principals are, are really ang anxious to have um, access to our marketplace and recognize the local uh, economy as you know, is in our back backyard that we should be knowing what should be done. So hence, we're, we're, we're really pushing forward to use the internet as a, a catalyst for exposure to for all our principals uh, as we grow our business here in Western Canada. Mm -hmm. So as a communication strategy, can we talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, you've developed this mantra called efficiency and responsibility, and we're now publishing something called the Ignition Report. Do you want to speak to that just uh, briefly? Sure. The Ignition Report is our catalyst, our, our, our portal to providing uh, quality information, qualified information to industry users that we, we use. And we, we're starting with our traditional businesses, but we also recognize with the power of the Internet uh, that we'll be able to expand out to those companies in areas that may not be familiar with what Imperi brings to the table. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a real uh, growth opportunity for all our principals to showcase specific technologies that are novel to their, their particular manufacturing sector. And the intent is that as we provide this exposure, we'll get good traffic from people recognizing, hey, this is really qualified information. It's not just selling stuff, we're actually providing technical solutions and everything's geared to efficiency and responsibility. That's again our, our core values that we're trying to present to, to industry. Yeah. And it's really about the dissemination of that information. I mean, you can find it, but if, there, if you can really elevate the discourse and, and keep everybody mm -hmm. informed and, and conscious of, of these uh, principles, if you will, um, I mean, efficiency speaks to bottom line, but it also speaks to uh, good use of resources and all of the other things that are so important these days. So. It's, you're absolutely right. And I guess we've done um, a sort of a lesser um, capacity approach on a face-to-face -face basis with our principals or our uh, customers on, mm -hmm. on f physical presentations. Case the studies. Case and studies and we actually, but they're very user group focused. However, we now are taking this to another level with the ignition report because we're saying, if we've had this great traction locally and they tell others about our capabilities, we, we get more business. But now if we can say, take the same message and disseminate it over the wireless internet, <laughs> uh, there's no end in sight to the opportunities that we can, we can realize. And uh, we've already had some successes with regards to internet-based marketing. So we're really excited about the potential that the ignition report's gonna provide to grow our business, provide awareness, and hopefully spread the, the good things that we do globally. So the future looks bright. The future looks bright. The future looks really bright. Back to the legacy for a moment. Uh, your son, Michael, has joined the company. He's also an engineer. How do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, an amazing time in my life right now. You know, I've, uh, uh, we've become a third generation company. Uh, Mike is, uh, 
stepped on board. He's now a second year with us and uh, very, very uh, impressed by the questions he's asking and his actions. His actions speaks volumes to me and so it's uh, my, I, I feel very warm inside to know that uh, we've got great catalyst and horsepower down the road so Imperheat can carry on and, and uh, hopefully be around for a long time to provide innovative solutions to industry. And legacy continues. Legacy continues. Thanks for this, Steve. Thanks, Kim. Fantastic. Great. Thanks. Great talking to you.